my ball. A few moments later. What's up, guys? I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. And we have such sights to show you. <laughs> oh. And today, we're gonna be talking about doing a laser engraved wooden inlay, kind of like this. But before we talk inlay, we need to talk about kerf. So you guys need to understand what laser kerf is, because laser kerf is real, man. It's real. Actually, every kind of cutting device has some sort of kerf. You may have heard kerf referred to when talking about like a table saw blade, like the thickness of a table saw blade. And while a lot thinner than a table saw blade, the beam of your laser has its own kerf and removes a amount of material between each side of the cut surface. The reason knowing what your laser's kerf is is important is it allows you to get a friction fit like this. This is not glued in at all. Also, knowing your kerf will allow you to cut finger joints like this. This box right here, there's no glue on this box. It'll just pop right open. See that? The reason it can fit, fit together like this is because I dialed in my kerf before I cut the box. Same thing with this thing right here. Those finger joints are just friction fit together. This is not glued together. I don't want to take those apart because it's harder to get back together. So before we get to the inlay, I'm going to show you how to figure out what your kerf is. Okay, so first we're just gonna hop into the Googler and we're gonna type in laser kerf images. I am gonna pull up this one, why not? Okay, so what we have here is, this is your laser beam. And as we know, a laser beam kind of goes into an, to an hourglass shape, right? It doesn't, it comes down to a point and then it fans back out. Technically, your kerf is gonna be more at the top of your cut than it is in the middle or bottom. So it's not gonna be consistent through, so that's why we wanna do this test. The best way I've discovered to determine what your kerf is, is to come over to this page here, festi.info slash boxes.py, or boxes.py. Once you're here, you wanna click on menu, you wanna come down to parts and samples, and pull this down and go to burn test. Pretty much leave the, the top settings as is. You may need to play with those settings depending on your laser. Uh, for this example, we are doing, a, our material is three millimeters thick. Uh, we want this in an SVG format, or actually, let's put it in a light burn for, format. Uh, we don't want tabs. And probably the only thing that I wanna change here is corner, and that's just because that's what I'm used to doing. And then we'll go ahead and generate and we're gonna throw this into, let me pull up a light burn real quick. And this is what it's gonna look like in light burn. Um, I'm just gonna grab these two and bring them down here. Well, maybe. Okay, we're gonna, I guess, ungroup these. And then we're gonna grab these two and bring them down here. If you wanna know what your burn is, that's this. I usually take this out because it's just not something I really need. And this is the file we're gonna run. If you wanna see another example of this done on a diode laser, go check out Curtis at Let's Make a Thing and check out this video right here. I'll link this in the description below as well. We're gonna be using a little three millimeter cherry as our inlay, so this is just a scrap piece. You may need to tweak the file for your particular laser. Here I'm doing the engraving of the letters at 25 inches per second, 38% power. The cut is gonna be one inch per second, 75% power. Once that is cut, you're gonna have two of these and two of these. Now each one of these has a measurement on it and what you wanna do is you wanna go around and see which one's gonna fit the best together. So you wanna go the same measurement to the same measurement. So this is 0.13, you wanna find the other one that has 0.13 on it and see if you can fit these guys together. So see how that's, that kind of, it's just a little too tight. Now the one that I found that goes together the best and gives me the best friction fit, hear that go together, is 0.100 millimeters. So now I know I'm gonna get that good friction fit and I am gonna glue the pieces down because it's gonna be an inlay and a table, but I know that these aren't just gonna pull apart with normal force. Next, what I had to figure out was I'm doing an inlay on two different kinds of wood, purple heart and walnut. So even though I know what'll cut into walnut and purple heart, I need to know what was gonna cut three millimeters deep in both of those. 
I ran these tests right here. I ran five inches per second, I couldn't get deep enough, so I went ahead and did three inches per second, and this is just a different, these are the, just the different depths. And the main thing with these guys is they're two different hardnesses of wood. I had to find the speed and power that would allow for a three millimeter pocket in both walnut and purple heart. Let's see if we can read this. Okay, so that is coming in at 2.91 millimeters and the purple heart at 85. What I noticed is walnut at 85 as well uh, went too deep. So what I decided to do is stick at 80 in order to compensate between the two of them. And Curtis did in his video was he cut a line around the outside. So he did the entire engrave and then he ran another pass to just cut the outer edge. And I think what he was trying to do is make the outer edge more like flatter so the inlay would fit better. I did that test with the CO2, um, you see it says line and no line, and the same thing with walnut. I couldn't really tell the difference between the friction fit on either one of these. They both are in there pretty good. So to save a little bit of time, I don't run that outside line, but that may be something you wanna do if you are running a diode that might help your friction fit a little bit. Once we have the mount of our curve, this is when we're gonna plug it into Lightburn. So we're gonna come in here, this is our image. We're gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And then that second one, I'm gonna put on a different layer so you can see them and I'm gonna fill it. Okay, so the pink is gonna be our engrave layer. This is the one where we said that our settings would be three inches per second at 80% power, right? Let me pull this out of here for a second, click on this guy, and I'm gonna turn this a color just so you can see it a little bit better. Let's go with neon green, and but it's still gonna be a line. Okay, maybe that's not the best color. All right, let's go with blue. No, let's go with dark blue. So this is going to be the part we're gonna cut out of cherry, and this is where our kerf offset is gonna come into play. Come up to the layer, double click it, you're gonna come in here, and your kerf offset is right here. And we decided that our kerf's offset was 0 0.10, correct? So that's gonna be an outward kerf at this point. If we wanna, if, if we want to bring the kerf on the inside of that line, you would do negative 0.1. Okay, so it depends on <clears throat> which layer you're adjusting. Okay, and then we will just take that downstairs and run and gun it, baby. Woohoo! And now, it's giant jigsaw puzzle time. I think the big pieces will probably go in, probably no problem. It's the really little detailed pieces that we're gonna have problems with. But we'll figure something out. And by figure something out, I may already have an idea. <laughs> Wackus bonkus! Ooh, you naughty Wackus bonkus. And just to give you an idea of what the final product is gonna look like. This is with a Rubio Monocoat finish. Full table looks like this, and it does have hidden storage in it. This guy opens up right there. If you wanna see how I built this whole table, click that subscribe button. That video is coming soon.